Good evening. It, uh, it's a bit different from usual. I'm back out at the uh, wildlife refuge that I went to a month or two ago. And last time I came out, by the time I made it out here, because this is a good drive, uh, it was full on already sun risen. As I drove up, I chased away any waterfowl that were there. And they, uh, they pretty much never came back. So to fix that, it's evening. And I'm going to go stay where I can stay at the rest area not too far. And then come back here by the sun, right before the sun rises tomorrow morning. Which means driving out at night and staying in the car overnight, which is a new adventure. But you'll, uh, you'll see I pull up. I didn't even get as far this time. I came out to the, the wildlife refuge because it's not very far from the rest area and because I wanted to check and kind of scout where I could go tomorrow morning. Well, there's still sunlight, not very much of it, so I'm not going to be here for very long, but there is the largest group of pelicans I have ever seen. Hundreds, easily. No less than a hundred. There's so many over there. I have a feeling they're all hunkering down for the night, which means they'll be here in the morning. So if I can kind of pick a good spot that I can get to without scaring anything off in the dark, um, in the early sunrise tomorrow, I think I'll be filming some pelicans in the morning. But we're going to take a look around, kind of scope it out, see where whereabouts I can go, and uh, then go get some sleep. here at the rest area now. Um, thankfully it is a very short distance away from where I'm going to be, which was one of the reasons why I wanted to go scout first, is now I know about what distance it is, so I know what time to leave tomorrow morning. Um, I'm allowed, rule, rules are half hour after sunset and half an hour before sunrise, so uh, sunrising around 5.30, I can get there as early as 5. So I'll probably wake up around 4.30, 4.45, somewhere in that area, try to head out by then. Uh, it's actually not as crowded as I thought it would be. We are, it's a Thursday night, which, you know, there's still people traveling and doing whatever. Um, but I just, that, that seems to be what everyone does here, is camping. A large, a large portion of this is where people go to be in the great outdoors. And it is quite nice. Um, I changed into some long sleeves. I've got thermals underneath and everything because it will drop down to in the 40s tonight. Um, and I don't have any way to generate heat, so sleeping bag in the back, I'll go crawl into that in a minute. I'm just going to read and, uh, hopefully fall asleep soon. I typically do not do well sleeping, not at home, not in a bed. I don't sleep very well, so I don't expect to, I don't expect this to be restful, but it will certainly be more efficient, and if it's not that restful, then... Thankfully, I won't be that sleepy trying to wake up early tomorrow to get out there. But really excited to go see, you know, all those pelicans. Because I really like pelicans. And, uh, never seen them outside of the beach. A huge group of them. I didn't see through the binoculars any young ones. I assume this is the time. Spring moving into summer when, uh, young pelicans would be raised. But, I don't know. Maybe we'll see if I can get closer tomorrow. That's all I got. Good morning. <clears throat> that was an experience. Not great, like I figured, but not too bad. I didn't, um, we got got up and got going right away 
for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them, I didn't want to be really making too much noise at 4.30 in the morning in a, uh, in a rest area where people are sleeping. It really wasn't that crowded, which I'm glad. Um, I'd rather it not be full of people, but there were, you know, four or five cars or something like that. People staying, RVs, uh, trucks, people driving tractor trailers, having to pull over, stuff like that. So, woke up and immediately jumped in the car and got going. Uh, one reason, so I wasn't making a lot of noise there trying to record here in the beginning. So, already, uh, already driving on the road on the, the path for this, uh, wildlife refuge be there in a few minutes and uh, then we'll start getting set up now we are in a race against the sunrise unfortunately I walked out I started looking around no pelicans, none whatsoever. They either got up before the sunrise, much before the sunrise, and all left, or they didn't stay here last night. No idea, no trace, nothing. And this seems like a pretty dead area. So, I'm gonna try to find another spot. I'm gonna try to have to be coy about it. Look, a skunk. So because my planning had fallen through with being able to see that group of pelicans, I was now desperately trying to find another spot to get all set up before I scared off all of the wildlife like the last time. I did manage to find a smaller group of pelicans on the water. I tried to get a nice long shot as the sun rose for a time lapse. I bumped the camera a few times, or otherwise I needed to adjust settings or focus. It's still kind of cool. The pelicans weren't the only thing that I saw that morning. Yeah. 
here I am struggling with the focus as this pair was coming straight at me and I had to keep adjusting focus while keeping them in frame at the same time. The Tringa semipalmata, I have no confirmation if that's the correct pronunciation, is also commonly known as the Willet. According to the Bird Book, this area is covered as a part of their spring and summer breeding range. What helped me identify them is that marking on the wings that you see there with the black and white. They flash that distinctive marking at other birds to either keep them away, to uh, attract a mate, it's a defining property, you can agree, by looking at them. There were also some pronghorns out grazing. Thank you. 
After a few hours of watching the pelicans, I did get restless, and I made the mistake of trying to go handheld and creep a little closer to the wildlife. Uh, keep in mind, I'm still a good more than 100 meters away. I have a long lens with an extender, but that's not good enough, and I did spook them off, which I regret for multiple reasons. It Mainly, it goes against what I'm out here trying to do by observing without obtrusion. And of course, my footage doesn't come out very good when you're at that kind of range on the camera, and I'm just trying to keep it steady on my shoulder. This was a mistake, but I'm keeping it in to remind myself to do better. And I even saw some gulls on the plains near the water. That was an adventure. Three or four hours went by of shooting. We trading off arms because my arms are tired. I just carried everything back. And probably made four or five trips because I was being lazy. I don't want to overexert myself. And I've been bringing more with me. Anyway. Yeah, it was all right. Uh, the pelicans, I did find a spot to to see pelicans and it wasn't quite the same spot as the last time I came out here but we're pretty close like I parked probably right over there a hundred feet or so and now I'm parked here so I basically almost came to the same spot because once again seeing the wildlife went ooh okay here we go this will be a good place and it kind of is but it also kind of isn't for different reasons one is it's just so big and empty out here there's really nothing to hide with, to blend into. You're just out in the plains, which they're the plains, right? Which makes it more difficult to get close to anything because it sees you from very far away. And that's like, I'm trying to think of it more of what is my end goal going to be? I feel like right now I go out, I get all set up and I just see what I can see from a sitting position which is easier. Theoretically, stuff gets closer. I've definitely had better luck with it at times. But then you're limited to right there. You can only see what's in your field of view for that point. Which works and it doesn't. What it would require is coming out many times, seeing the same subject over and over, and being in slightly different positions each time so you can get different angles. It's tough. It, it's the kind of thing where it would take me years to complete any kind of project because it would just be time and time again trying to get stuff, which makes sense. And if that's the goal, then that's what it has to be, but it's tiring and it's uh, hard. <laughs> no one said it would be easy. I know to expect that, but yeah, it would be, what would be easier would be to just chalk this up as a loss and just go, eh. But I still, like, I have to put it into a perspective of, first of all, I made great strides. I finally got out on an overnight so I could be out at the sunrise instead of trying to wake up, which I know I have trouble with, and I'm not going to do that unless I haven't slept very well in the back of the car, which is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. So that's fine. So a learning experience. I got to do that. I got myself prepared for that. I can do that more easily now. I kind of did it the first time and now it will be easier each time going out to do that as an overnight I just have to plan for it it means I gotta eat dinner a little bit earlier last night to get out here at night anyway yeah, it's actually been um, a few weeks since I made it out three weeks ago the last time I went out both days I went kind of exploring and just driving around and then grabbing the camera out of the car and shooting off my shoulder or grab the tripod too but just kind of going from place to place trying to see what I could see which mimics kind of what I was doing with photography where I would 
there were kind of two ways that I would do it. I would either set up a trap on and um, it's a large buzzing, a bee or something. Um, I would set up the tripod and just see whatever I could see from that, which again, limits you in the fact of you're only gonna be able to capture things from that one angle or thereabouts. You can move it a little bit, but you can't really get too much, which can be better depending on if you're skilled enough that you know what to expect and when to expect it. And you're, it's easier to hide so you don't disturb the wildlife. Uh, the other style was going out and shooting more of handheld, not with the tripod so much, monopod sometimes to just give me stability, but then you walk around a lot, and uh, then you have a lot of options. Doing that here is tough. Tripod's really heavy. Camera's big and heavy. Shooting from the shoulder with the big lens is pretty near impossible to get a good clean shot because everything's just shaky. I move around. I, I can't hold it that still. I don't know if I just have to train myself better and start practicing with it all the time to get it to the point where it's there, or if it's just, uh, except that handheld's gonna be, I mean, that's kinda how it is, right? Like, you'll see movies and stuff and you know when they're shooting handheld because yeah, they limit it as much as they can, but it's still a movement. It is not a still thing, like, um, on a tripod. So it comes back to, uh, I'm just all over the place because my thoughts are all over the place, but Two weekends ago was bad weather. Weather that was not conducive for me shooting in. It was either full cloud, overcast, or rain all the time. Last weekend was most of the same thing, only with uh, high winds. Sunday was looking like it might be good, but then it, it was like 60 mile an hour winds on Sunday. Uh, we had a storm roll through another part of the state, which affected everywhere else. So just not conducive. Me going out in 30 mile an hour, 30 to 40 with gusts up to 60, it's just miserable. It's, it's going to be dangerous. It's dangerous to drive. It's dangerous to be walking around with a big camera on my shoulder. I'll just get knocked over. So I took the time instead to do a lot of learning and research because that was one of my goals for this month. I kind of set goals each month in accordance with a, a schedule. Um, so I did. I learned quite a lot. I set up... Um, I got a new monitor for editing, specifically a color balanced monitor so that I can do color grading a lot better and I'm pretty happy with what I've already I, I just put out something the other day um, this week on Monday which was just like a, a trailer for the channel it was just real quick uh, here here I am here's what I do and then a bunch of wildlife footage and so I re-edited all the wildlife footage um, on the new monitor so I can actually make sure it's properly color balanced and I got a calibrator and I did the whole nine yards <laughs> as far as I understand it. And I had to learn how to do all that stuff, so I was, I've signed my, I'm on lessons to, uh, to learn the process, the software I'm using, doing all that. I've gotten back into that. Um, I did that when I first started, uh, when I first bought the Pocket Cinema camera because it came with uh, the editing software DaVinci Resolve. And I went, well, I don't know how to use this. I've used other editing software. I don't really do a lot of video. I mostly had done still photography at that point. I'd messed around with other video editors, but not, in a serious way, so full on about a year ago, yeah, it's May. That's around when I was shooting and editing that um, that footage from back in Georgia for the the wetlands. Which hindsight twenty twenty, great place for some things. Audio would never have come out because audio was always going to be uh, 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 where the good spot that I found was right next to where the water drain was, so it was constantly water flowing, so you'd never hear anything. But even that, that took me four or five weekends of shooting, different positions, different places. I know I did at least three different spots where I was shooting the same area, where I found a successful place to come to again and again and see wildlife, and that's what I'm hoping to find here. This place just isn't gonna be it. It's not like, yeah, there's wildlife here, but I'm not going to be able to, to get to a point because as soon as you, like, it's just, they're, they're so, it's so big. You want an area that's not too small because then wildlife will just leave the area. But if you find an area that's too big, the wildlife have a lot of places to go when they see you and they perceive you as a threat because there's no way you can't be perceived as a threat. They're either used to humans, which is not wildlife, or they're not, and then the second they catch wind of you, they're gone. So when it's so big here, like, there's so many pelicans right over there. There's just, there's so many. But I know as soon as I get close to, that's what I tried to do here, was I went, again, thoughts are all over the place. 
but after a few hours of shooting from the blind, I went, okay, I'm trying to tell a story. I'm trying to collect shots of multiple things. I, I'm, I'm trying to narrow down, instead of just going out and doing more of like a snapshot of, look at everything I saw, I'm trying to narrow down one subject, shoot one subject all day, track that subject, follow it so I can tell a story about that, because that's what's going to be, that's the job, right? Like, that's, that's the goal. If I'm going to do cinematography and I'm going to make videos full length, feature length, or anything, even even if they're short, it has to be concisive. Just a collection, a random collection of wildlife footage is, it's not the most entertaining to look at. It doesn't tell a story, it doesn't captivate, it doesn't keep your attention. It's only going to interest people who are just like, I want to see all wildlife. Whereas, if you tell a story, you could interest a lot of people, and then you gain more traction. And, and then what happens is you wind up babbling for so long that the battery dies because the batteries on this don't have the best life. Um, I get maybe about 30, 45 minutes recording time. Anyway, I don't remember quite what I was talking about. I do know I want to um, change up the format a little bit for what I'm doing with this, kind of telling the story, because quite often I will shoot all day and then go home and during the editing, I go, wow, that's cool. I bet I didn't talk about this at all because I probably didn't even know. Sometimes the wildlife, I don't get to find out what it is until I even get home, so I can't even talk about it. And I just avoid extra work. I try to make these more simple so uh, they're easier because um, it's not really my focus. My goal is not to, my goal is not to make vlogs full-time. My goal is to capture wildlife full-time on video. So I try to put my attention there and less about here, but they go hand in hand, and I can put a little bit more effort into this as far as, uh, it, it the very, I don't, maybe I'll set up this camera and do some talking bits when I get home after I do the editing before it, you know, it all goes together. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just do audio. Maybe I'll just do some dubbing over talking about some stuff. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But I'm going to put that into practice um, more often, I think. Yeah, I'm trying to circle back, but having to change the battery, I really lost my, uh, my place, and this is getting long enough without providing much relevant information. I'm gonna try walking around. I'm gonna try driving around, I'm gonna try walking around, see if I can scope out this place a little bit more, see if there's anything else to see, or if I can get close enough to get footage of anything. I'm gonna swap out for, from the big lens to the uh, servo lens, because that one I can do on a shoulder pretty well. Um, it's just not as far distance wise, so I have to get closer, but that may be how it goes. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Um, I'm gonna try that for a bit before I head home. Either way, it's still a good day. Always a good day to get out. Been out of practice for a few weeks. Good to get back to it. I'm glad the weather's getting nicer and I think I'll be out here more. Um, technically, this is a holiday weekend. Memorial Day is Monday. I probably am done for today after I finish up with this stuff. I don't think I'll go out again tonight. That's a bit much to try to do two days in a row. Um, I have to prepare for food and things like that. And, Think about where I want to go. I did see a skunk this morning. That was nice. I've never seen a skunk in real life before. Um, I don't know how well it came out. It was before the sun had risen at all, and it was in the car driving, so I just grabbed this camera and pointed it out the window, at the windshield. You could tell it was a skunk with its tail. So, that was cool. Anyway, I'm gonna eat. I have a, a sub roll and some peanut butter. And that was the top of the car.
So, just a quick thing. I drove around for a while. Looked, tried to see how far I could get. Um, I went down the main road further into this wildlife refuge that is also someone's ranch. It's named the same thing, so I, I think they donate their land for a wildlife refuge. What they're not using. But there was a lot, there were several people, cowboys I assume, because they were riding horses and gathering cattle and uh, somebody on a ATV or something like that, like leading them. And I didn't want to be like following them on the road being like, come on, or, you know, pressuring them or anything. I just turned around. That was as far as I go today. I tried some other paths going down. There's several areas that are marked as do not trespass, so I didn't go those places. I stayed on the main road where I assume I can be, but... Didn't really see much. It's just big open. It's very pretty, like the mountainous backgrounds and everything. It's it's a pretty place, but for my purposes, I think I need to stop coming here. I'm just not gonna get what I need. I need to find smaller places with areas where I can go and hide and, and set up a blind and be in coverage and wildlife doesn't, they don't have as much space to, to go to, but that's gonna do it for today. It's been, it's been a long day considering it started much earlier than it usually does and I was already out here. And uh, well now that the sun rises sooner, that means it hits more of an apex sooner. It gets hotter sooner and then you get a lot of uh, wildlife, like there's just pronghorn laying all over the place because there's so many in this area. I did see, um, I see some here, let's show you. focus it's so very very far away uh, very high up in the sky but it's vultures or buzzards or something one of those I'm not entirely sure which because they're really high up in the sky circling maybe there is something for them to eat over there I don't know we'll see as I drive past anyway that'll probably do it for today but there will be more because I'm going to go home and talk over the footage, see if anything came out from today. It should. Hopefully the pelicans did.